digest it for you, shall we? Let's analyse it, if you like. Our international affairs editor, Philip Tell, is joining me here on set. Philip, I gave a little bit of a flavour, but tell us in a lot more detail what exactly is it. Well, I think the best way of summing this up, Stuart, I've been looking at remarks across the wires and in the press, uh, one which said, this is a bare-knuckle, nasty slog of a campaign that few Americans really wanted. That's to say, a rematch between Donald Trump on one side and Joe Biden on the other. OK, well, this is taking place, as you said, right the way across the United States. 15 states and one US territory are up for grabs today. Uh, there you can see them on the map uh, in yellow. So that's Super Tuesday. It's important because there are so many delegates that are available uh, to be won over by the two candidates. One third of total delegates are up for grabs today. That's 874 Republicans and 1,420 Democrats. That's why it's important. Now, mathematically, neither uh, Trump nor Biden can qualify after today's Super Tuesday, but certainly that's going to push them forward to become the nominee for their uh, party after today is over. We, might, we may find that out within the next week or the next two weeks that they are going to be the nominee for president for the upcoming elections on the 5th of November. Let's divide it up then. Um, let's talk about Donald Trump first of all. What's at stake for him? Well, he's had a good week this week so far. Yesterday he won North Dakota. He was also given a ruling by uh, the Supreme Court in the US, a unanimous ruling that he was now able to appear on the ballot papers in Colorado. So that's going to boost his campaign a little bit. He needs 1,215 delegates. He currently has 247, but he's predicting his team that today he's going to win 773, which is going to push him even even closer to getting those 1,215 that he needs. But on the bad side, his uh, financial and legal woes are still not over. He faces four criminal, courses, uh, four criminal cases and 91 felony counts across two state courts. Uh, there are many feeling that this is going to galvanise his support base and give him uh, what he needs to win that party nomination because people feel that he's being uh, hindered, discriminated against, he's a victim. But if he is actually convicted, some Republicans are saying, well, that's going to be a different story and they probably won't want to vote for him. Uh, I'll just give you one uh, primary exit poll in New Hampshire for the Republicans said 42% said Trump would not be fit for office if, we, if he were found guilty. On the other side, there's Nikki Haley, who's also still in the race, she's trying to upset Donald Trump, not having much luck. She won Washington, D.C. Uh, that's the only state she's managed to pull off so far. Uh, don't know if she's going to win anything today, but what she's trying to do is to pull some support base away from Donald Trump to stay in the race. But I think it's going to be incredibly difficult for Nikki Haley to do that after this Super Tuesday, Super Tuesday is over. Yeah, you said on the other side, Nikki Haley. On the other, other side, if you like, what about Joe Biden? Well, Joe Biden, uh, of course, uh, there's no doubt that he's going to be the Democrat democratic choice for candidate for the presidency uh, for a second mandate. He needs 1,918 delegates. He currently has 206. Total up for grabs today, 1,420. So he's on the way to securing that nomination uh, for president uh, for the United States. But he's some key vulnerabilities. Uh, the first one is that he's struggling to sell his uh, first term achievements. Even though the economy in the US is generally doing better, people are still complaining about house prices being too high, for example, uh, which is undermining or what he's trying to sell as being very positive. Second point, he's trying to convince the public he has the energy and the ability to take on a second term in office when many are saying, well, look, he's losing his memory, he's too old, he shouldn't be running again. Uh, that is very difficult for Joe Biden to convince a lot of voters that he is uh, fit for a second term. And he's also losing support of part of the electorate in the United States over his stance of supporting Israel, not calling for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. Some are saying, well, we're not going to vote for Joe Biden because of that. Uh, we feel that he should be much more vociferous towards Israel. So, a few facts and figures for you, Stuart, to wind up this with 132 days until the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee, which is when Donald Trump will probably be nominated. 167 days until the Democratic National Convention in Chicago for Joe Biden and 245 days until the November general election. Can't wait. And I can just picture now all those uh, US viewers, which you probably most of them are asleep, but the ones that aren't, they're all just gearing up, waiting to vote. I'm and sure. more tomorrow morning. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks very much, Philip Taylor, International Affairs Editor there.